Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about sockets. Now think about the internet. So what we do on internet is we have a lot of machines, right? We have all these nodes. Now this node can be a server or this node can be a client. Uh, and, and, and of course it can be a client to client network as well where you have all the nodes and they are talking to each other. Basically it's a peer to peer network. Now let me focus more on the client and a server network. So we have clients and we have servers. So we have servers on the internet who is listening to the clients, right? So they are waiting for the client to send a request and this server will send you a response. Example, let's say when you go to google.com, so Google server is up and running. It is waiting for the client to connect. So the moment you send a request to the Google server, so Google server will send you some response, uh, maybe a page or maybe it will say, hey, page not found or something like that, right? Now what we are going to do in this video is we'll understand the base of the internet or the base of the network, which is sockets. Uh, so we'll do socket programming with the help of Python. Now, of course, we have understood the basics of Python, right? We have seen the language itself. Now it's time to implement that on, on the network. Now, basically, when you say you are using socket programming here, so we'll be using two things, the server and a client. Of course, we'll write two files. Uh, but then before that, we have to also understand two concepts. One is the, uh, the port concept or, or the port numbers. And the second one is the type of connection we are going to build. So let's talk about the first one, which is ports. See, when you have a server, a server will have an IP address. Of course, right? The way you interact on the internet is with the help of IP address. Uh, now, this IP address can also have a name. Example, google.com. It's a name, right? Domain name. But then behind the scene, what works is the IP address. Now we call them as public address. Uh, but if you are working in the LAN environment, if you have multiple machines connected to a single Wi-Fi or the LAN network, we basically create a private network. Uh, so of course we can have a of course we can have a private IP address as well. So basically we we have IP address, right? But then if you have a machine and this machine provides you multiple services, every service will have a different port number. Uh, example: If you are running a HTTP server here, it will be having a different port number. Uh, if you are using a mail service, you'll be having a different port number. So likewise, in our code, when we create a server, it should have a port number as well. Now we have to use a free port number, of course, right? We don't want to use a port number which is already booked for something else. Uh, example, if you have a Tomcat installed, uh, it will use a port number by default, which is 8080. So we can't use that port number. Uh, so we'll be using a port number which is, which is 9999, which always works for my code at least. So we don't have any service or global service running on this port number. The second point is the type of connection. Now, if you have seen the concept of networking, uh, we have this concept of TCP and UDP. Uh, so we can have a connection oriented network or we can have a connection less network. Uh, so basically when you talk about TCP, it stands for transmission control protocol. Uh, it uses a connection oriented protocol, which means you have to first create a connection, then only you can communicate. On the other hand, we have UDP in which you don't have to create a connection. You just have to send the packet. Now based on the network or based on the address, it will simply reach to the particular destination. Uh, the only drawback in UDP is you're not sure if your packet has been reached there, right? That's the only issue. But in this video, we are going to talk about TCP, where we have to first create a connection, then only you will send packets. Now, to make it work, we'll, let's open our PyCharm. So let's go to PyCharm and let's create a simple project here. So I will say create new project and we'll name this as socket or we can say socks. I know that sounds weird, but let's go with that. Let me get a project. Okay, so we got our project here. And as I mentioned before, we need two files, one for the server and one for client. Of course, we can create multiple clients for different purpose. But at this point, let me get one client. So I will say new, let me create up a, uh, a server first. I will say this is a server.py. So of course it will be server.py. Now, how do we create a server? Now, first of all, if you want to achieve socket programming in Python, you have to import a module, which is for sockets. So I will say import, import socket. And here, we, once we have imported the socket, it's time to create a socket itself. Now, how will you create a socket? So you will say, uh, let me say S now. So we'll be using two conventions here. S means server socket and C means client socket. Uh, as of now, we are focusing on server. So let's say S equal to, and it's time to create a socket. So I will say socket dot, uh, how will you get a socket? So there's a, there's a function called socket. So we can use that. 
And basically we have to pass two things here. The first one is the type of network you're working with. Is it IPv4 or IPv6 address? The second one is the type of network, which is your uh, TCP or UDP. In this case, I'm not mentioning anything. So by default, it will be TCP and by default, it will be IPv4. So once you have done that, of course, you can mention that in the bracket if you want to work with IPv6 or if you want to work with uh, the UDP network. So you can mention that as of now, we do we are not mentioning it. Okay, so don't, once your socket is created, we'll simply print socket created. Of course, we can print anything, doesn't matter. Okay, now once you got a socket, we are making this socket as a server socket, right? So it will accept the connections, a very, very powerful thing, right? But if you want to accept the connection, of course, your machine will be having the IP address. What you need is a port number. So basically, you have to bind a socket with a port number. Uh, how will you do that? So you will say s dot. The function name is bind. And you have to pass two things. Uh, you have to pass the IP address and you have to pass the port number. Uh, so when I say IP address, I have to use the same machine. Of course, uh, normally when you talk about the network, you have multiple machines. Uh, one machine will be client, one machine will be server. At this point, we're using the same machine. So the same machine will be, will be a client and the same machine will be a server. So the address I will be using is localhost, of course, right? And then you have to give a port number. Now the port number I will give is 999. Of course, you can use any port number which is available, which is free. Uh, so this is free. Let me just use that. And the range for the port number starts from 0 to so 65535, something like that. So that's the last, num last port number you can use. Uh, but then don't use any port number in thousands because all the port numbers are busy with some Windows services or some Linux services. So use a safe one. Now, once you got your port number, uh, once you have binded your socket to a port number, the next step is you have to start listening to the client, right? So you have to wait for the client to connect. Uh, but then at, at one point, how many clients you want to connect? That also depends, right? Maybe you want to, uh, maybe you want to create a queue for five connections. You want to get a queue for 10 connections or three connections. Here, let me just go for three connections. I mean, three uh, clients will be waiting for the connections. So I will say S dot, listen, and we'll say three. So what if you have the fourth connection? Basically, it will be getting refused, right? We don't have that much of space. So as dot listen will say, hey, I will wait, I will have the buffer for three connections. Now, once you do that, we can also print waiting for the connections. Uh, so that will print something on the screen. So we'll say, so waiting for connections. And now what next? Now, once you are listening, of course, a client will send you a request. Till then, server will do nothing, right? Uh, but then how many connections you will you want to accept? So let's say you got the first connection from a client and you have processed that request. Now you will get a second connection. You have to process that request. I want this to be running in continuous format. And if you want to do that, you will use a loop. So let's use a while loop. And I want to run this while loop in a continuous way, right? So infinite loop, so I will say true. And now in this, I want to accept a connection from a client. So in this case, I will say s dot accept. Now this is responsible to accept the connection, but then it will give you two things. So it will give you the, the client socket and it will also give you the address. So you have to accept both. So we'll say client socket, we have, made, we have talked about that, we'll say C. And then it will also return the address of the client. And we need that, right? So we need two things, the socket and the address. Now, once you got this two, what you want to return to the client? Of course, we can print client connected here just to see if that works. I will say connected with, and of course we can print the address. Of course, right, we can print the address. And then we want to send something to the client. We can say, hey, welcome to Telisco. Uh, let's do that. So I will say, so I will say C dot send. And in this, I will print uh, welcome to Telisco. And that's it. Once your job is done, it's very important to close the connection because we have talked about it always close the resources and that's it you got your server created now will this work let's let's try so I will right click here and i will say run server oh something went wrong it says bind take exactly one argument into okay bind takes the object form okay so let's let's pass that as one argument not two okay that one mistake let's run this code okay so you can see it says socket created that's great and now it says waiting for the connections and it still says waiting for the connection and it is not printing connected with. Why? Because we don't have a client yet. So let's create one. So let's right click here and let's create a client. 
So let's create a client here. Now, how do we create a client? It's very simple. The same step, you have to import the socket first. That's done. And once you've got a socket module, we have to also create a socket for a client, right? The same step. So we'll say C equal to, of course, it's a client socket, right? So we can say C equal to, you have to say socket dot socket. And as I mentioned, it is optional. You can mention the, you can mention two things here. The first one is the type of IP address you're working with. Is it IPv4 or IPv6? The second one is the type of network. See, now once you got a socket, now what's the next step? Do we have to bind to any port number? See, that's the server job, right? So server will bind the socket to the port number. Client will simply connect it. So how will you connect to a particular server? It's very easy. You will simply say C dot, and you can see it gives you the list of functions, right? You can just look at them and you can say, hey, which function you have to use, you have to say connect. And in this connect, you have to pass two things. You have to mention the IP address of the server and you have to mention the port number which you want to connect with. Uh, the IP address we know, and it should be one thing. So you will say I'm connecting with localhost and the port number is 999. That's how you connect with a particular server. So let's verify if this is working. So we'll go step by step, right? So we have a server which is still running. It is waiting for the client and we'll say right click here. We'll run this. Okay, client is spending nothing if you can see the console. But if you jump to the server, there is an error. Why we got an error? It says the bytes like object is required, not string. Oh, that's weird. So basically what you do is when you want to send this, you have to send this in a byte format, not in a string format. How do you do that? You have to use a bytes as a function which will convert your string into byte format. And then you have to also mention the format in which you want to send it. You have to send it in UTF-8 format. I think it will work now. Let's right click and let's run the server first. That's very important. You have to start the server first. And now let's go back to client. Let's run this. And as usual, the client is printing nothing because we have not done anything in the client, right? We are not printing anything. But if you go back to the server, server says, hey, waiting for the connection, that's great. And we have also got connected with, because this time we are sending a request from the client, as the first client. And look at the IP address, basically a local host. And this is a port number, not of the server, of the client. So even client is the port number to connect. But that's a self-generated uh, port number. This is working, great. Uh, now let me let me just do something. Because see, if you see the server, server is sending some data to the client, right? So it is client's responsibility to accept it. And we can do whatever we want with that. But how will you receive this? So it's very simple. Whatever we'll receive, we'll print it. I will say C dot receive. That's the function you have to use, receive. Uh, and then you have to also mention the size, buffer size. Let me just mention buffer size as 1024. And I guess it's done. So whatever you will receive in a buffer, it will simply print it. It should work now, right? Let me just go back. And if you can see the server is still running, so you can just rerun this client. And this time you can see client has received something. Client says, welcome to Telisco. That's great. And you can see on the server side, you've got two connections now. I mean, one is done, this is done. This is a new connection with a new port number. And every time you run this, you will get new connections, new port numbers. And if you go back to the server, you can see we got the same. So we got three clients. So server has responded to three clients. Okay, that's great. Now, if you can see on the client side, we have one issue. It is printing B as well. Notice this B. So B is basically a format it is printing. It is printing bytes. We don't want to print bytes. We want to print strings. So in this case, you can also say decode. Now, when you say decode, it will not print B at the start. So if you run this client, you can see it is printing the string format. Welcome to the disco. That's great. Now, how can you make this more interesting? What if when, you, when client sends a request, you can see client is sending the IP address, but then all the client on this machine has the same IP address. What if you can send the name as well? So what we will do is when you say connect, once you, once you got a connection, I will ask the user for the name. So I will say uh, name equal to, I will ask for the user to enter the name. I will say enter your name. Now, once you've got a name, you will send this name to the server and that will be interesting, right? Now, how will you do it? You will say C dot send. That's how you send the data to from one node to second node or from one socket to second, second socket. And in this end, of course, you have to do the same steps. You have to send the data in a byte format and I am sending a name and I have to also mention the UTF, UTF type, UTF-8. That's done. Now we are sending name as well. But on the server side, once you accept the connection before sending data, you have to accept the value from the client. Now you do that. You will say name again. And this time you are receiving on the server side. So you will say C dot. 
of course we are receiving from the client socket so you will say receive uh, receive yeah and then in this you have to mention the buffer size as well so you have to say 1024 and it's very important to decode it i guess it's done oh it should be done before printing this because i also want to print the name that will make sense right and then yeah so this 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 makes sense let me just read on the server because we have done some changes in the code and this time it says socket created waiting for the connections let's go back to the user i'll go back to the client and go back and say run it says enter your name i will say naveen enter nothing on the client side is just printing welcome to this code that's great but if you see the server side we are printing the address as well as the name that's fancy that means if i run this client once again with a different name uh, this time we are connecting with uh, hush and if i say enter go back to the server you can see we got a new client uh, hush now you can try this on two different machines that's that's your assignment okay uh, take two machines if you have or you can do it in your college lab write this code on two, two different machines one on server i mean server on one machine client on second machine the only thing you have to remember is on the client side when you mention the local host you have to mention the ip address of the of the server of the server right how will you get the ip address you can use uh, ip config as the command on the command prompt or if config on linux so if you're using that uh, and that's how you get the ip address and you can try this out in fact i would recommend you to create a chatbot you know so you can create multiple chat multiple clients you can create two clients and then they will be communicating with, with each other of course through server so when client one sends the data to the to the client two it should go to server first and from server it will go to client two when client two sends some something client data will go from client two to server and then to client one it, it's awesome right that's that's the part of programming in python in fact it also works in java uh, in all different languages available so that's it that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed uh, let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos bye bye